Well, good morning, traders and investors. My name is Roger Scott, and I'm the Senior Strategist of WealthPress. Today is Monday. It's April 4th. I can't believe the summer is almost upon us. Can you imagine that? I'm still thinking winter's here, but, well, here we are. It's about 7.55 in the morning. The market's going to open up in about an hour and 35 minutes. And as you could see here, the NASDAQ is up pretty good. The s and is meeting us halfway and the Dow Jones is having a hard time staying positive. But I'm going to say this, with these type of, uh, with these type of global macro, macro and microeconomic events, I can't believe the market is this strong. And I'm going to say the reason I am so bullish for the market is not because I believe the market is just so, so good or the economy. I believe it's because of all the money the Fed pumped into the market because of COVID. It's actually because of COVID why, why I believe volatility is so low and the markets are so strong. I think if it wasn't for the money that the Fed pumped into the market and the liquidity, this market would be hurting so bad right now. Anyway, let's get into the analysis. Um, NASDAQ is up 47 points quite a bit. Let's talk about what we have on the plate this week. Not a busy Fed week, which will give the market a chance to stand on its own two feet and show us its own trading action. We've got factory orders today. This will give us a good understanding of how the supply chain is impacting the factory orders and how inflationary pressure is impacting the factory orders as well. The big report is going to be the FOMC minutes to give us an idea of what the Fed was thinking when they changed the interest rate policy at their last meeting. Then we've got the jobless claims. Those are pretty much the big reports for the week. I mean, we've got international trades and goods and services. That's going to be important. But I think factory orders is going to clue us in on that report. Now, let's talk a little bit about global economy, and then I get, I'll get into the nitty gritty. Oil prices advanced while U.S. futures slipped over the weekend. U.S. U, not U.S. Ukraine President Zelensky said the country will include international investigators in a probe into alleged atrocities against civilians by Russian troops. From what I understand, things got really ugly. 410 civilians were found in areas outside of capital. And again, these are civilians. Shares in Hong Kong traded Chinese companies surged Monday after regulators in Beijing say they plan to revise rules regarding access of overseas regulators to full audit of companies that have shares listed in overseas markets. Finally, I think it's only fair if Chinese companies are going to have companies listed on U.S. exchanges, they have to apply by U.S. audits, just like U.S. companies do. If it's only fair for us, it's only fair for them. The Chinese financial magazine Cakeson reported that China proposed the revisions of rules restricting shares of financial data offshore traded companies to help resolve a long-standing dispute with the U.S. that could result in more than 200 Chinese stocks being kicked off American exchanges. That's very, very smart and forward thinking of China. Because look, if you want to be part of the U.S. exchange, then you have to have U.S. regulators audit you, just like you do U.S. stocks. If it's fair for the goose, it's fair for the... All right. Wall Street benchmark rose Friday after health report Friday in the U.S. job market eased worries over recovery, though it reinforced the likelihood of more interest rate hikes. The Fed data has been fairly strong. Stronger, stronger employment may give the Fed more leeway to raise interest rates to beat down price increases sweeping the country. The Fed has already raised its key overnight race once, the first such increase since 2018. Followed Friday's job report, traders increased bets that the Fed will raise rates again. But again, the market is um, assimilating it really well. It's doing well, as we'll see in a few minutes. The invasion of, US, of, of Ukraine by Russia, a major oil and gas producer, has raised the risk that sanctions and export restrictions might crimp suppliers. U.S. oil is at 99 almost at $100 a barrel, and we went as high as $120 a barrel. And now utilities are seeing much of the same price. Now, looking at the put to call ratio, we're back above one. Now, I'm actually liking this because anytime the put to call ratio is above one, it's telling us that the stock market has some bullish, bullish, meaningful upside momentum. Anything below one is neutral and anything below 70 is uh, bearish. But anything above one, and we're at 101 right now, is actually telling us that there's too many put buyers for the call buyers. And typically, we see an inverse of that. The bond market. Now, as I mentioned, the bond market looks like it stopped moving down and start moving sideways as soon as the Fed announced they were going to raise rates, which means most of what the Fed said they were going to do was priced into here. 
I'm actually hoping that this war is going to cause the Fed to slow down their policy a little bit and cause the bond market to go just a hair, literally just a hair higher, possibly to the 137-ish area where I want to sell the living hell out of it. Excuse my French. Um, you never have to wonder what I'm thinking. I'll usually tell you. But I'd love to see it near the 136, 137 level because I think the trend is going to continue down because I think the Fed will continue raising rates and it's just a matter of time. But again, uh, interest rates are still near historic lows and we've got a while to go till inflationary pressure via the bond market really impacts us in a negative way. Now, cumulative strength index, energy, utilities, basic materials, consumer staples, real estate, the defensive sectors are still leading. But, but if you look at it on the 30-day basis, look at where consumer discretionary is. And, and also, also look at where consumer staples and industrial is. So things are changing around. My, I'm curious to see whether this consumer discretionary is gonna continue moving higher. Because right now on a cumulative basis, tech and consumer discretionary are not fragmented anymore. And that usually happens when the market goes down. The, the defragmentation happens when the market cools off a little bit or congests and let the, lets the sectors recover. So I like the fact that industrial um, and, and material are getting closer together, that consumer discretionary technology are getting together. But I, what I really like is the fact that utilities and real estate and basic materials are overcoming consumer staples on top and that consumer discretionary and technology are actually moving higher. Look at where they're at here. They're at uh, one, two, three, four, five, sixth place. But on a cumulative, they're all the way down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ninth place. And, and when you look at, and I was showing you guys this last, last week, if you look at the major, um, major sector heat map, look at here let's look at five days look at where consumer discretionary is but it is it's all mixed see that's the thing usually you won't see utilities consumer staples and consumer discretionary together but remember we're we're we we're in a very unusual market right now and again consumer discretionary on a one month basis has gone up so these sectors are definitely coming higher now let's look at some position levels the question now in everybody's mind, is the S&P going to fall down and come back to the base or is it going to continue moving higher? My bet is that we're going to move higher. We've had three or four down days. I think we're going to regain the upside. The major levels now we need to break, and we've already broken past the 50 and the 200, but the major levels we need to break right now are the 472 level, and I think it's going to take us a little bit to get there. On the QQQ... The levels we need to break are we just need to break above the current level honestly and if we can break the the 372 again we'll be in good shape for the consumer discretionary sector it's that 190 191 level which is about five points above where we're at right now we need to see us break above that level but the fact that the dow jones let me show you this excuse me not the dow jones the fact that the spy is actually holding above the 200 day moving average is very, 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 very solid. Now looking at these sectors individually, energy looks like it's gonna congest, maybe go a little bit higher, stay at these levels. It's made more, mostly a wait and see with energies right now if this war is gonna continue. I think utilities are a little bit overbought right now and need to cool off. Basic materials is congesting. And I like to see a congestion, especially after a long extended run like this versus it falling right back on its face. This is positive. Real estate looks like it can go up another and uh, a little bit more. Real estate numbers have been coming out good. Consumer staples are right at that breakout level. So we may congest here for three to five days and then continue moving forward, kind of like what we're seeing with the energy market right now. Healthcare, very similar with consumer staples. I'm seeing a lot of choppiness enter the market. I'm not seeing a lot of, I'm seeing less volatility, more choppiness. Um, financials and industrial are cooling off a little bit. Communication sector is going to stay choppy, it appears. Technology is cooling off a little bit. Consumer discretionary is cooling off or staying choppy. So what I'm seeing is maybe slight downside pressure or choppiness for the first half of this week till we get some uh, Fed data. Now, the biggest opportunities, the biggest opportunities are going to be if the S&P 
breaks above the 461, 462 level. If we can do that, and if the QQQ can break through the 372 level, we're going to have some major opportunities to the upside. Keep your eye on the bond market. There's a good chance if the bond market can go up another five basis points, we're going to sell it. But right now, I think we're going to start off the week very choppy, and we kind of let let, let we kind of have to let the market show its hand. Volatility is at 20 right now, which means it could rise a little bit before moving lower again. And I like how to put the call ratios up at one, but usually when it goes back up to one, it usually stays around these, these levels for a while. So don't be surprised if we have some volatility, but the market not going anywhere for the next few days. It's very, very normal and it's very, very typical, especially after these run-ups. Look at the run-ups we've had. Look at the run-ups we've had. Look at this. So some of this needs to, to the market needs to assimilate some of this run-up and decide whether prices are at the point where they can even go higher or we need to consolidate or go lower and i think we need a few days of discovery for that so expect uh, expect the crazy volatility but don't expect too much directional bias this may be the first week where the market actually doesn't go anywhere or at least begins showing us clues of what's to come but this week is going to be an interesting week because it's going to tell us where we stand in light of everything we've experienced over the last couple of months. And if we could stay up at these levels and not give back everything we've accumulated over the last three weeks, then this is a very, very strong market. And I believe it's going to continue moving this way. Now, before I let you go, between the Russian-Ukrainian war, rising interest rates, rampant inflation, skyrocketing gas prices, we've seen the stock market whipsaw counts day in and day out now for months, actually since October. And there's been no directional bias of late on Wall Street, right? I mean, we're just choppy. Sadly, we're sure a lot of people have seen their gains from the past two years ripped away in a matter of weeks. That's why. That's why former hedge fund managers, Jeff Zaninari, he's sharing a special strategy today at 1 p.m. Eastern time. It's happening at 1 p.m. Eastern time. Follow the link below and check out heaters. It's very, very cool. You're going to love it. It's right what the doctor ordered in this type of market economy. Dr. Scott, that's me, ordered this right now. This is the best thing ever. I love it. I wish everybody would get into it or at least check it out. Follow the link below. And if you're watching on YouTube, you could follow this link in the in the Wealth Press YouTube channel. Tomorrow, strongest sector, strongest stock, weakest sector, weakest stock. Can't wait to get into it. Today, the market is going to show its hand. Be patient. Mondays are typically, eh, Fridays and Mondays are not the best days to trade. Good to get into positions, but not to get out of positions. Follow the link below. Check out heaters. If you're liking this video, send me an email. Support at marketgeeks.com. I want to hear from you. Of course I do. I'll talk to you guys later. Have a great, great day. Bye.